Johnny Cash is one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century, but what you may not know is that it was a Canadian who really kick-started his career. And that man's story has roots right here in B.C. He has since passed on. But his son is learning more about how deep his father's connection really was to the man in black. And as Steve Darling explains, they both battled similar demons. Nanaimo, the harbor city, a beautiful oasis with a secret, a secret connection to the legendary man in black. Our story begins thousands of miles away, though, in London, Ontario, in the mid-50s. The Hall of Family, led by the patriarch Saul, was a music promoter who was booking rock and roll acts until one night, a tall, lanky country singer came to town. Well, Saul and Johnny met in 1958, but this promoter in London, Ontario, actually dressed Cash down and they had a terrible fight the first time they worked together. Uh, and Johnny said something, or Saul said something to Johnny like, you're just like all the rest of them. And having been insulted, having been, um, you know, stood up to, Cash suddenly looked at my father a second time and started taking him seriously. And actually, they started a friendship and the rest is history. Shortly after that, Cash decided that Saul Holoff, a Canadian, would manage all of his affairs, giving him the right to do so in the form of a simple letter. Saul put his imprint on Cash right away, adding to his show, including a female singer. What few people don't realize is that June wasn't the first June, she was the third June. Uh, Patsy Cline was the second June. So before you know it, uh, Saul hired June December 7th, 1961, in Dallas. A remarkable romance. Yeah. While professionally things were going well with Saul, much like his troubled client, Jonathan's dad was fighting his own demons. It wasn't uncommon for his sons to fall victim to his anger. Saul had a certain uh, persona, a certain aura about him. He projected uh, authority and, and uh, people just uh, looked, you know. Yeah. He, he was a tough, tough son of a bitch. With Johnny Cash becoming more difficult to manage, Holoff had had enough. He quit, said goodbye, and moved his family to Nanaimo, retiring at 49, a move that would put father and son on a collision course. His um, abuse of me in particular got worse to the point where he stopped talking to me at 14. His lectures kept coming. I'd get typewritten letters slipped under my bedroom door. But he stopped talking to me when I was 14 and I left home at 17. The young Holoff would go on to Hollywood as a talent manager and work successfully for years, never really talking to his father again, until 2005 when Jonathan's life would forever be changed. In the room just behind you, your father committed suicide. That's true. Yeah, tell us, tell us what, how you found out and, and the situation around that. When you're left with a situation where someone is there one day and gone the next with no note yeah. and not leaving anything, anything yeah. to you, um, you don't have any options to kind of seek uh, reconciliation yeah. and redemption. Knowing he was in pain and trying to understand his relationship with his father, his mother Barbara gave him a key, a key to a storage locker and what was inside would change his life forever. And tomorrow, Steve will show us just what was behind that locked door of the storage locker, how it changed Jonathan's perception of his father, and what it tells us about Cash's career. That's tomorrow on the News Hour. Last night, we introduced you to Jonathan Holoff, whose father, Saul, was Johnny Cash's Canadian manager and the man who helped to launch the music legend's career. We heard that Saul suffered with alcohol and he took his own life in 2005. A short time later, though, his son found a storage locker that told the story of his father's amazing life. It also helped to heal father and son wounds and provided the material for a documentary. Steve Darling has the story. I saw it life and I thought, well, here's the key to all of his files. After this returning to Nanaimo to following his father Saul's suicide, Jonathan Holoff was filled with so many questions and very few answers. This is Saul's first business card with Johnny. Prisoner. Why was he so angry? Why was he so hard on him and his brother? With no note left behind, it seemed those answers were buried with his father. Uh, three months after I got back, a movie called Walk the Line opened, and all of a sudden our phone started to ring and it wouldn't stop. 
fans wanted to know if we had any memorabilia that needed a good home. My mother had overheard all of these calls and produced a key to a storage locker and said, you know, you might find some answers about your father in this locker. Now, most people would probably run to that storage locker as fast as they could, but Jonathan, who ran as far away from his father as he could get, didn't want to face his father's memory head on. I went to the storage locker twice, twice, right up to the door, turned around and walked right back out again because I didn't have the guts to open the door. There's no better way to put it behind you. But on a cold Nanaimo night, Jonathan returned from seeing the movie Walk the Line and felt now the time was right. There was, you know, 600 letters between he, Johnny, and June, many handwritten. There were song lyrics, arrest reports, mug shots, um, you name it. Uh, there was uh, a cache of cash, a gold mine. But I wasn't there for Johnny Cash, I was there for my father. Memorabilia aside, what meant the most to Jonathan was what he describes as his father's therapy. He recorded 60 hours worth of personal audio diaries my starting the year I was born and going right up until the time he died in 2005. He has just recorded at San Quentin, but Folsom Prison Blues is number one. What's happening to me? I'm falling apart. I'm fat. I'm drinking too much. I have no exercise. It is not a very pretty picture. I was and hearing his I voice across the decades. The uh, I was hearing another guy my age talking not my father. And after listening to 60 hours worth, I got to know a man that I, I never knew as a child. The loneliness, the, the self-disgust, and the jeopardizing my kid's future, and financially risking suicide. But I'm Jonathan would spend no night after night listening and transcribing those tapes, and what came out of it, in essence, was a script. I went to the storage locker with empty spiral binders to make notes, to try to do my own therapy and uh, try to uh, find some peace with my father's suicide and the way he treated me in life. Jonathan gathered money from family and friends and created the documentary, My Father and the Man in Black with a message about loss and reconciliation. My biggest regret is that I had to wait until after he died and spent 20 years with a hate on for my father, like so many people do, yeah. to only learn from his audio diaries that he, he really was a, a person and facing challenges like we all do. I am still right here. And I tell everybody I meet, don't wait until your parent passes away. Make peace with them now, because you're not going to find a storage locker. Find a way. Pretty remarkable. The documentary opened in Toronto to rave reviews, and it will be shown at film festivals around the world. Dates for the film's opening here in B.C. will be announced in the fall.